Hello Bio 16. Today we'll be covering the digestive system and just be aware that this is a long lecture because there are a lot of parts to the digestive system. So this particular lecture will probably be presented over three or four individual videos. So the digestive system, if I can get my slides to work here, is basically a series of organs and a big muscular tube that pushes food uh, starting from the oral cavity or your mouth through the pharynx or the back of your throat down the esophagus to the stomach the small intestine and eventually to the colon or which is also called the large intestine now that's the digestive tract which is a separate grouping of organs compared to the accessory organs now accessory organs are called accessory because you may or may not have them present, but you can still digest food without them being there. So our accessory organs are going to be things like teeth, your tongue, several glands, salivary glands, which you'll find in your mouth, the liver, pancreas. And then uh, all these accessory organs work together to secrete compounds into the digestive tract. Now, yes, the teeth don't secrete anything, but the teeth do help um, uh, break food down into smaller pieces. So the functions of the digestive system start with ingestion or bringing food or liquid into your uh, digestive tract. Then we have mechanical processing, which is going to include chewing and mixing the food. So this would be the action of your teeth and your tongue in your mouth. Digestion is something that I often hear people use the term inappropriately because digestion is actual the, actually the chemical breakdown using enzymes uh, in your digestive tract. So what you're doing is you're taking large molecules, so things like um, uh, glucose polymers. So here I'm going to write, you know, a few uh, glucoses out here, dot, 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 meaning you have a really large glucose molecule. Glucose molecules strung together like this actually are starch. Starch can be broken down into individual glucoses using enzymes. Each glucose then can be absorbed individually in the small intestine. So digestion is the process by which large molecules are broken down into smaller molecules and small molecules are absorbed through cells in the digestive tract. So we'll get to that in a little bit. Secretion is the process by which um, usually enzymes are secreted or kind of pushed into the digestive tract, and we'll look at that in a little bit. Absorption is moving the molecules across the epithelium into interstitial fluid or into the blood. We'll talk about that. Excretion is the removal of usually waste products, although you can excrete other things, into the digestive tract. And then compaction is where water is extracted out of... Uh, the, the compounds traveling through the digestive tract and eventually uh, elimination of feces occurs as a consequence of compaction in the large intestine. So let's start by looking at the digestive tract. The digestive tract itself is made out of uh, several layers. Here we are with the tunics again. So tunics are, again, we saw this in the blood vessels. Tunics are layers. So we have the tunica mucosa, which makes mucus. We have the tunica submucosa, which is basically the base of the mucosa, the tunica muscularis, which is going to contain smooth muscle, and then the tunica serosa. The, um, basically, you're going to have different um, thicknesses of each of these tunics along the length of the digestive tract, and those variations give you the different functions and the different regions of each organ within the digestive tract. So right here, we're looking at uh, just a general picture of the digestive tract. This looks very much like the small intestine. And so what you're going to be looking at here are the tunics. So right here, you're going to see what we're going to call pleca. The pleca are these very large turns in the digestive tract. So here's a digestive pleca. The pleca on top of them are going to have the mucosa, so the mucosa consists of these additional little zigzags, which we call uh, villi or microvilli. The microvilli are uh, underlied by the lamina propria. The lamina propria is basically the tissue 
just kind of like the, um, oh, I don't know what to say. It's just kind of like the interstitial space uh, where you're going to find cells. And then we have the mucosal epithelium right here. The mucosal epithelium is going to be this outer region. So the mucosal glands within the mucosa consist of uh, cells that are going to be making different types of solutions. You don't need to worry about that right now. But within the mucosa, you're going to be having, right here's our mucosa, our uh, lamina propria, our mucosal epithelium, uh, and the mucosa consists of the microvilli. The submucosa is where you're going to find vasculature and sometimes lacteal or lymphatic vessels. So sometimes in some of our figures, the lymphatic vessels are identified as green, and I kind of like it when they do that because yellow is oftentimes nerves. Um, I don't want you to worry about the color right now. You just need to know that the lacteals or the lymphatic vessels travel along with the blood vessels, the arteries in the veins. The submucosal uh, plexus are nerves, which again, you kind of have over here in yellowish. I just, I kind of don't like uh, that you have kind of this lymphatic vessel right here, which is yellowish, and then you have uh, the, the submucosal plexus. But those are actually the nerves um, serving the submucosa. We have the muscularis externa. The muscularis externa is going to have different orientations of circular muscles. So you have one layer pointing in this direction and another layer pointing in this direction. What this allows the stomach to do, or not the stomach, but the digestive tract to do, is contract laterally right here and kind of horizontally here. So that peristalsis, peristaltic uh, contraction, allows food to roll through the digestive tract. And then we have the serosa out here the visceral, and the visceral peritoneum. The visceral peritoneum is going to be basically a layer of tissue that's uh, holding everything together. So here's the visceral peritoneum right here as well. So when you're looking at all of these different elements, what you have is a series of chambers where food rolls through, and then food can be absorbed through the pleca, through the individual cells of the mucosa. The food molecules are then absorbed into uh, the, the vasculature, which we'll get to later. So the tunica mucosa has three layers, the, uh, ex the internal layer, um, this is basically where you're going to find lots of glandular secretions. Basically, you need that kind of glandular secretion so that food can roll through evenly and smoothly. It's a moistening uh, epithelium. The lamina propria, like I said, contains lots of blood vessels, sensory nerve endings from the plexus, lymphatic vessels, and some smooth muscle fibers. And then we have the muscularis, which is the larger component of smooth muscle. And all of this is organized into these longitudinal folds that we were called, that I showed you called the pleca. The tunica submucosa is what's going to be surrounding the mu muscularis. This is a lot of connective tissue holding everything together, so that's a good thing. It also holds blood vessels and lymphatic vessels in place. So whenever you have areolar connective tissue in the digestive tract, that's actually holding stuff together and holding the blood vessels and lymphatic vessels and sometimes nerves in place so they don't move around too much as peristalsis or contraction in the digestive tract happens. Now some layers here are going to contain enzymes or cells that make enzymes and some cells that make buffers. You're going to talk a lot about that in the um, uh, physiology, so I'm going to leave that for physiology. The submucosal uh, plexus has a series of sensory neurons that are uh, regulated by, there we are, the parasympathetic ganglia that run alongside the uh, spinal cord. These uh, parasympathetic ganglia also, uh, or I'm sorry, the sympathetic postganglionic fibers also interact with the submucosal plexus so that you have both parasympathetic and sympathetic activation of the digestive tract. So remember, parasympathetic is rest and digest. And what that means is that parasympathetic activity is going to allow the digestive system to run smoothly. Sympathetic is fight or flight, right?
So I just got this new pen I can kind of write now. Sympathetic activity actually downregulates action in the digestive tract, whereas parasympathetic activity increases activation to allow rest and digest to happen. So when, you're, when you have fight or, fight or flight happening, you don't have a whole lot of digestion uh, and movement of food through the digestive tract. Now moving on to the tunica muscularis, this is a lot of smooth muscle organized in circular and longitudinal layers. Like I was showing you a few minutes ago, you have like the lateral and the um, kind of the horizontal movements. These movements are all coordinated by what we call the mesenteric plexus. This is what is going to be regulating parasympathetic, rest and digest, and sympathetic fight or flight activity. So the mesenteric plexus is found within the mesentery adjacent to the digestive tract. Now, how do things get trapped in one region or another of the digestive tract? Sphincters are circular muscles that allow food to go from one region, or I should say that limit food from flowing from one region to the next. And so Here's my kind of idea of a sphincter. Sphincter is a circular muscle uh, that contracts to limit flow from one chamber into the next chamber. So one example.